people experience happiness and hardship in equal measures. I believe that because happiness exists, hardships exist. But after hardships, happiness will follow. I will tell this tale forevermore, so people can know the value of happiness. The ancient civilization, long ago, so far in the past that it boggles the mind, there was a flourishing, civilized society that had advanced knowledge and technology. But human conflict knows no end, regardless of the era. At its zenith, the ancient civilization found itself on the path to ruin the consequence of humanity's evil desires. In the midst of this chaotic time, a certain young girl was living her life. Come on, Cello. I'll never wish for anything more. Not this again. I'm a normal girl too. Sometimes I just want to sneak out and play. Aren't you the princess of this country, Sherry? So? The Princess Sherry everyone else knows isn't the real me. That's just a puppet, pretending to be a kind and wise princess. No better than a bird in a gilded cage. I can only be the real Sherry with you and Kildia. Fine. I give up. So, where do you want to go? I heard Kildia and the Minister talking lately. Apparently, there are secret treasures in the treasury. Treasures? That's right! They grant wishes! I think they were called... Oh, that's right! The Light of Beauty and the Shadow of Beauty. Uh... Come on, you don't believe me? Well... But what if we could use those treasures to cure my brother's illness? Maybe we could even get rid of war, permanently. Sherry. Fine. Let's head to the treasury, if that's what you want. Thanks, Chilla.
I'm so worried he had to look for you himself, Princess. Sneaking out of your room is one thing, but breaking into the treasury is too far. Your Highness! Sherry hasn't done anything wrong. She just wants to have fun sometimes, you know? You watch your mouth. Sherry. Look me in the eye, Sherry. I know how you 
you feel. You want to go play, but you can't. You want freedom, but you can't have it. I felt that way myself, so I know why you do the things you do. I'm not mad at you, okay? Everyone loves you a lot. Me, Cello, the minister, and everyone else you know. As long as you keep that in mind, it's fine. You don't have to force yourself to be someone you're not. You're still a child. You can just be yourself, Sherry. Hildia. I love you. The light of beauty and the shadow of beauty. These items were treasures that granted me, who liked any freedom, a small taste of adventure. But I had no way to know that these two gems would end up completely changing my life during this time. Where there's light, there's shadow. Where there's good, there's evil. Here, there was something that sought to plunge us into a different form of tragedy than what the war was causing. That something was called... The Light of Beauty and the Shadow of Beauty. I heard they'll grant any wish. Now that's what I want to hear. I'm the only one fit to own treasures like those! I only have one desire, you know. That's right. I want... a hot boyfriend! I've been alive for centuries, and I still haven't fallen in love! I'm not going to be able to rest in peace if I die without a boyfriend! true that the treasures will grant any wish someone makes? That's what they say. Those things have been passed down from generation to generation in our family. 
Apparently, they were originally created to seal away some terrible overlord that brought suffering to the people. Terrible overlord? I don't believe the terrible overlord ever existed, to tell you the truth. But when everyone's hearts are joined together as one, supposedly, the treasures will grant their wishes. We've been keeping them in the treasury ever since, just in case we desperately need them one day. In the power of people's hearts, huh? I wished for your illness to finally be cured, Kildia. <laughs> Thoughtful as always. Now that I think about it, I'm feeling better today, Sherry. Really? Yeah. So don't mess with the treasures again, okay? All right, Kildia. <laughs> That's a good girl. <coughs> Don't worry. My throat was just feeling ticklish. You asked for better health, didn't you? I'll definitely be cured in no time. Kildia. Hey, Cella. Let's find the treasures and make another wish for Kildia to get better. Huh? I thought Prince Kildia hid them away somewhere. That's why I want you to help me find them. I'll never wish for anything more. Not again.
Take this! Deadly Slash! It's time to smile!
Probably. Stop right there, witch! Are you okay, Sherry? Killed you! Leave this to me! Cello, take Sherry and get outside! Wants to pick a fight with me! Kildia? <laughs> What's wrong? Is your illness acting up again? Beauty! I've never seen such a lovely woman. Huh? Kildia? Are you... okay? Oh! It's him! He has to be the one that I've been looking for! Just... is this... love? Sometimes, the flower of love can bloom on first sight. Ah, I can hear my dear brother Kildia falling apart from his core. Several days after that accursed, fateful day. The two secret treasures were successfully protected, and our lives returned to their normal bliss. But ever since he met that witch Marjorie, Kildia stopped smiling. He could often be found looking serious and brooding. People began to gossip repeating rumors, saying my brother had been cursed by that witch, or that his heart had been stolen by a spell. And then, one day... Someone! Someone please come! What's wrong, Sherry? I'm coming in! Sherry, what happened? Cello, w when I woke up... I found this letter by my bed. Letter? This? To my dear little sister. Sherry, please listen to me. I fell in love with... a certain woman. These past few days, she's all I can think about. Though I've only met her once, my feelings just grow stronger. And I think everyone is starting to realize how sick I really am. There is no cure. I probably don't have much time left. I've long since given up and accepted my fate. But upon having met her, I felt that I wanted to live again. As Prince, it pains me to abandon my duties. But I want to place my hope in the shadow of beauty. Only the Divine knows how things will turn out. In any case, we'll likely never meet again. This is my first and last bit of selfishness. I'm sorry, and I hope that you'll forgive me. Please don't grieve, Sherry. Where there are meetings, partings follow. And where there are partings, new meetings await. That's just the fate of us humans. Someday, you too will understand. As a keepsake, I'll leave you my instrument I used to play. I'm sure it'll be of use to you. Farewell, Sherry. My adorable little sister, I hope you never lose your kind heart from your failure of a brother. Wait, did he? 
no hope? That can't be! There's no way my brother would just leave me behind like that! His illness can't be life-threatening either! I just don't believe it! My brother can't be dying! This letter has to be a lie! Everyone's been saying Kildia's under that evil witch's spell! Marjorie has to be behind this! That's definitely it! It has to be! Calm down, Sherry. How can I calm down? I have to rescue Kielzia from that evil witch's clutches!
Deadly Slash!
happiness is a mysterious thing. Someone who appears miserable might actually be happy, and the reverse might be true as well. With the woman he loved, Kildia took hold of the wings of freedom and set off to a new world. I still don't understand it myself, this whole romantic love thing. But if my brother is happy, then that's all that matters. However, I did feel like becoming that Marjorie lady's sister-in-law sounded awful. I never considered whether I, myself, was happy or not. Thinking back on things now, I understand painfully well just how truly valuable and precious those days I took for granted were. Perhaps people can only really appreciate the happiness they had once they fall into misfortune. Reports from our spy in your uncle's temple ceased the other day. This letter is their last report. Unsettling moves from the king's brother. Rumor has it that your uncle's army has been strengthening its forces. We must take precautions and be ready for the worst. I see. Uncle's really going to do this? Very well. You may act as you see best, Minister. I will leave this in your capable hands, but if possible, please make sure harm won't come to the people. Yes, Your Highness, I understand. If only Prince Kildi were around. I thought we agreed not to speak of him. Indeed. My apologies, Princess. Today is the prayer ceremony. Please be sure to come to the ultimator. Of course. Sherry. Don't worry, I'm fine.
treasure that grants wishes based on people's hearts, huh? But it couldn't stop the war. Probably because this world is overflowing with hatred. However, I'm sure there will be peace in the future. If we believe in that, it should take us there. Yeah. It's possible we might end up in different times. We might never see each other again. But even if we're separated across eras, our hearts will still be connected. Sherry. Oh, don't make that face. Smile, alright? Sherry. I'm sorry. It's just... Why? Why did it have to come to this? I just don't understand. Why? I don't want to go anywhere. I just want to stay with everyone else. I don't want you and me to separate. Sherry. I... I don't want that either, but... Stop it, Sherry. You have to fulfill your duties. Come on. It's time to go to the future. You're right. Cello. Please, don't let go of my hand, okay? Let's believe in our feelings and go to the future. Respond to our hearts. Light of beauty! Cello? Where are you, Cello? And so, the light of beauty carried me into the future. Sometime later, I learned through history books that my homeland fell to ruin. I ended up stuck in the future, all alone. La 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 la. A full year had passed since I came to the future. The future was, well, peaceful. Perhaps the sorrows and hopes of all those who died in the war had been heard after all. A man from Orange Village, Mustaki, ended up finding me when I was collapsed in the forest. He took me in and treated me as his own. The other villagers, too, would treat me with kindness. Here, the peaceful world that we all longed for existed. But... Thank you for the meal. Done already? Yes. I'm going to take a walk in the woods. Ah, are you going to look for that cello boy again? Just let it go, Dad. It's what she always does. Oh, shut it, Marius. <laughs> what the heck? Sherry, today is the one-year anniversary of when I found you in the woods. What do you think about taking that day as your birthday? We can have a celebration and everything. I see. That's so nice of you. I'll be off now. Hold it! What's that attitude for? People are offering to celebrate you! All you ever want to talk about is cello, cello, cello! How long are you going to look for some guy you'll never even find? What's wrong with you? There's no way you could ever understand how I feel. Who wants someone like you throwing a celebration for them anyway? Cello used to give me wonderful presents on my birthday, you know? He... he was my only friend! <laughs> Looks like Marius still has a lot to learn.
ギルギル。
Marius was my first friend in this future world. Thanks to him, I managed to find the smile I'd lost. At the time, my heart was overflowing with gratitude towards him. But with a struggling crayfish in my hands distracting me, I had some trouble finding the words to express that to him. Good times go by in the blink of an eye. Time flowed on from the youthful days I spent with Marius, and I grew into an adult. Now I'm a sister in Orange Village. Marius went off to travel the country to study art, and I haven't seen him in years. But he's supposed to be coming home for my birthday today. initiative. And thus, the phrase that would go down in history was born.
In the distant past, I was born during the era that people now call the ancient civilization. The ancient civilization fell to ruin, but I chose to keep living to warn the future about the evils of war. The world in the future was peaceful. I felt completely at ease. But people were foolishly trying to repeat the errors of the past once more. Devastating power. Marl Kingdom stopped an invasion from our neighbor. Soon after, the war came to an end, and peace returned once more. I came to this future world to teach people the folly of war. But in the end, I wasn't able to change anything at all. Cursed my powerlessness.
everything that I had seen before.
ancient civilization was brought to ruin by war. Are people incapable of learning anything from history? Were all the sacrifices for nothing? Why? Why do people have to repeat the mistakes of the past? However, I believe... I believe that one day, everyone will realize. It has been several years since the war ended. That terrible war claimed the life of the man I loved. But he had left behind a new life within me. I decided to name her Cornet. She gave me both a goal in life and the hope to live on. The painful times don't last forever and happier ones soon follow. She taught me this. Okay, Cornet. What do you want to play today? Um... Um... I want to play adventures with Kuduru! <laughs> you sure love Kuduru, don't you? Yeah, yeah! You gave her to me after all, Mommy! She's a super-duper special puppet! <laughs> Is that right? Maybe you have the power to make friends with puppets, just like Mommy. Huh? Make friends with puppets? That's right. That horn I gave you has a mysterious power, Cornet. It'll grant all kinds of wishes. I'm sure if you learn how to play it, you can become friends with a bunch of different puppets. I don't think I need more friends. I have Mommy with me. You sure do. And Mommy loves you very much. But there's no guarantee I'll always be able to stay with you, Cornet. Uh, I don't want you to go away, Mommy. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Mommy was just kidding. Don't worry. I'll stay by your side until you find your happiness. Yes, of course. I promise. Pinky swear. Okay. Cross, Cross my, my heart, heart and hope to die. Stick a needle in my eye. I promise. Yay! Pinky swear. <laughs> I love you, Mommy. Cornet, let's play. Oh, it's Atua. Hello there, Etoile. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am? Well, I guess she's not out of line. I am old enough to have a child. Oh, you're wearing the headband I gave you, Etoile. It looks lovely on you. Th thank you. <laughs> Etoile's blushing! <laughs> Is your father busy with work again, Etoile? Yeah... Goodness! What a pathetic excuse for a father! Etoile's such an adorable child! How dare Carl leave her all alone! I knew rejecting his proposal was the right decision! Mommy, what are you so mad about? Huh? Uh, it's nothing! Mommy was just talking to herself. Don't worry. You two be good, okay? Have fun playing outside. Okay! Alright. I've got to clean the church today.
<laughs> Silly girl. There's no need to apologize. Mommy, wake up! You promised you'd stay with me until I found happiness, didn't you? My pinky swore! Cornet. <laughs> That's right. Mommy will always be by your side, Cornet. Right until you find happiness. Mommy! No! Don't leave me! I'm sorry, but Mommy can't hold on anymore. Please, Cornet, play the horn for me. Give me strength one last time. Okay. Don't cry. Mommy will always be by your side. Oh, ancient gods! Hear my final wish! Just before I died, I gathered the very last of my strength and channeled my soul into a puppet. Afterwards, I went on to live by Cornet's side as her puppet Kududu. Cornet never realized this, but that allowed me to live with her as a good friend. Where there are meetings, partings follow. Where there are partings, new meetings await. Perhaps life is an endless cycle of this. And after I watch Cornet grow up safely and find her own happiness, I once again set out on a journey. Some might say I lived a happy life. Some might say it was a miserable one. Happy or not, even I couldn't answer that. The one thing I can say for certain is that I was satisfied with my life. People experience happiness and hardship in equal measures. believe that because happiness exists, hardships exist. But after hardships, happiness will follow. I will tell this tale forevermore, so people can know the value of happiness. From now, surely until the end of time. Finally, with all my gratitude, I say this.
Thank you. Thank you.